everybody. Hi. Hi. So thanks for coming today. Um, we're going to talk about our experiences and who's got the power to change things in our communities. And I know change can be challenging and it can be uncomfortable. It can bring about tensions and conflict and it raises questions about who does have the power to make change. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I'm going to start off today by saying that generally, through Big Local, we've much greater community engagement than previously and residents are seeing that they do have a voice. Well, everyone's saying yes, it's run by the community, but how on earth can it be run by the community when we've lost four members since the end of 2018? If I said residents were in control, residents would just laugh. Yeah, residents engage at different levels. Some don't even know they're taking part or influencing the decisions made in Big Local. Uh, what we have to be careful of is that it isn't those who shout the loudest who become the most influential. A very careful balancing act is required. Yes, and having everyone round the table, from the police to the lived experience team to the drug rehabilitation services, alongside us, a small resident-led group, was both intimidating but exhilarating. Yeah, I agree. Relations between ourselves and the local council are improving, but there's still this sense of hierarchy rather than equality from some sectors. Yeah, in our case we can see that the parish council is reducing the ability of Big Local to grow. The council partnership member hasn't a clue about Big Local and the projects and he wears his parish council hat pretty much all of the time. I'm thinking about how difficult it can be to get people involved and engaged, especially when there is such a formal process as well as the public impression that these organisations and institutions, whether they be council or community, are there to do stuff for them. There is definitely a clear divide between the doers and the receivers. Yeah, dis despite now having a good relationship with local councillors in general, I still think they believe they hold all the power. I'd say 50% of the council now work with us, but even they, in the back of their minds, still feel superior. Yeah, I know what you mean, but at least Big Local has a seat at the table now. The Mayor stated is always willing to come and discuss community needs with us. He understands that as local people, we understand what the community needs. However, his idea of community involvement appears to go through existing local government structures. Yeah, and so there are some agencies that take advantage of our more informal and unstructured practice. And they don't always deliver to the high standards that I think they might have done for a larger or a more established agency. Mm. No. This is our money and we want to spend it as thoughtfully and effectively as possible. And we shouldn't be afraid to demand what was commissioned. It can be difficult, I know, when we're dealing with big agencies and corporate machines, as they can intimidate us when we're still learning as we go along. I think looking at the way in which we hold power is something that the partnership is, is just starting to think about. And they're holding resident-only meetings now where they explore the project without the influence of staff or other outside people. And I can see the impact that's having. People are more assertive and they're now forming a much stronger group. Mm, absolutely. That's why I think the most significant decision we've ever made was to only have residents on the partnership. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This ties into the models of community leadership and what the council members now realise is that there are alternatives to their model, that others in the community have a voice and they are capable and that such influence does not necessarily undermine the council but can and should enhance it. There are some people, though, who haven't been that involved and feel on the outside. I'm worried that they see us as a clique. <laughs> yeah, it is a very difficult one. I mean, I'm now retired, but I'm not afraid, albeit in a very measured and quiet way, to challenge, question and seek sensible answers. So I think it is true to say that several members of the partnership do have considerable power within the group, myself being one of them. This is largely due to the longevity of our connection with the project and our commitment to it. And I'm continuing to grow in my belief that it isn't what you know, but who you know that really counts. Mm -hmm. But I'd say in our case, power rests with the LTO and its control over the finances, something that's been creating quite a bit of tension. But the choice of where the funds go must stay with the residents. We have to wrestle back some control. Yeah, well, we had a meeting where there was a sense that the rep and the LTO were leading the meeting. And even though they recognised it and they prompted residents to be more proactive, it just didn't seem to happen. It's difficult to build up confidence and skills in those attending the meetings when there seems to be so much going on. And the concept of the rep challenging, no matter how softly, always has an adversarial tone to it. Yeah, but we had a case where the workers were shouting at us and trying to bully us into making a decision. In the end, one of the women, she actually stepped up and said, look, 
I think the committee are right. They've thought about all of these things, and you can't just shout at them as if they haven't thought about it. Yeah, there's always a risk that residents will rely on the staff's advice and be influenced by them, especially if they feel that the staff member comes from a position of authority. Though, I have to say, in recent months, I've watched a very different approach to the power staff hold, as the residents are becoming bolder, stronger, uh, more demanding, as they should be. Uh, it's been exciting to watch the residents finally find their feet and start running, with the staff firmly beside them, not out in front. Well, we try, but went to a big local meeting yesterday, and I was a bit put out. I'd objected to something at the last meeting, and it wasn't even minuted. So I, I really was quite upset. You know, this is meant to be a community-led organisation. This isn't about an advisory committee. It's about a committee that actually leads the organisation. And it's not the workers that do that. Right. Mm. And there has been a lot of reflection regarding resident-led and what that means and whether or not being local is drifting away from this and what that means. It seems as though we've just been told that there is no alternative. It has left a bad taste in many of the local residents' mouths as they feel ignored or overlooked in two major elements affecting their big local projects. I personally have found it a lot easier not being chair as that really was quite a lot of responsibility. It was a difficult time with a lot of conflict in the board. But hang on, it's meant to be fun. <laughs> so how do we make it fun? And how do we ensure that residents are taking the lead? Well, firstly, we aim not to moan. There's nothing more off-putting than a moaner. We share a mantra. We don't see problems, we find solutions. A positive attitude, can do rather than can't do. With doubters, that is essential to engage them in the project. Even if they are a nuisance, and perhaps they are time-consuming, it is important to involve them, I think. And it's also important for them to have the opportunity to see the matter from the inside and get a real understanding of why things are the way that they are. There is always more than one way to skin a cat. Undoubtedly, I do hold some considerable sway within the project. However, I, I hope that it's mainly used to uh, enthuse and encourage others to get involved. It is difficult, as these working relationships quickly grow into friendships. And with friendships, you don't often address issues of power or influence. Yet in the partnerships case, it's integral that we constantly check in with each other and make sure no one person is being held above, or being allowed to make decisions or talking for the group. It's a continual process that doesn't just apply to the residents, but to the staff as well. Mm. Thinking about it, power comes in different forms. The more successful our big local becomes, the more empowered it is. Over the years, we've built up a good reputation with other community groups, statutory bodies, other voluntary organisations. We're now very often their first port of call when they require some community information or require feedback. We're now actually invited to sit on committees and panels. So I think that working on Big Local, it's like juggling a lot of balls at the same time, while other ones are being thrown in or pulled out as you keep trying to keep all the balls in motion. So change is an inevitable part of Big Local. People change, priorities change, the landscape and the population change, young people become young adults with new interests, workers retire and have different needs. Big Local is a constant ebb and flow of a multitude of changes.